you for uh, attending this, shall I say, it's an obscure uh, topic. I say it's not only obscure, but also boring. <laughs> you know, writing a book, it's, it implies a lot of work sitting on, in front of a screen. But uh, thank you for your time, and uh, I will try to make it uh, interesting as much as it is possible. So, um, Ecuador, Ecuador is a country where, when I started studying the birds, didn't have a field guide. And um, back in year 2001, finally, uh, Robert Richley and Paul Greenfield uh, published a, a, a book, uh, The Birds of Ecuador, it's supposed to be a, a field book, but uh, it's really heavy. So it's, 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 it's uh, three pounds, eight ounces, it's 740 pages. and you know, pretty good size to carry around. And it's nice to, it's a wonderful uh, job, but you know, when you are in the field and especially when you are for several days when you backpack uh, looking for birds, it's kind of a heavy. So, uh, and, this, and this was the standard of all the books that uh, we have been using and we're still using. I mean, Ecuador just recently published in 2000, a year after we published our book, 2018, there was a new, uh, a newer book about the same setup. And this is going to be. So. Uh, it's going to be pretty boring. So when when uh, uh, Miles McMullen, who is the mastermind behind our our uh, whole book, he arrived in Ecuador in 2006. He was uh, some of the comments I told you about uh, how how difficult it was to carry around a heavy heavy big book in the field and having to read of a text and go forth and back. So he started thinking on-, on It's not, it's about the, the guy who's written a field guide to Ecuador. So yeah, it's pretty- Sorry, it's someone- we, uh, Somebody needs to mute themselves. Okay. Charles. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Don't worry. So hey, I'm, I'm just gonna interrupt. I mean, unmuted, please. Mute your first job. Okay, let Alice go ahead. Thank you. So um, by year 2006, Miles McMullen, who is the mastermind, uh, the artist, and also an uh, ornithologist and bird watcher, uh, arrived to Ecuador. He, he went to explore the country. Well, he was traveling the world, but he decided to settle in Ecuador Now we can't hear Lellis. Here we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, yeah, something happened. Okay, so. Lellis, you've gone off again. Yeah, no, I know, but No, it's gone off again. Charles? Whoever is the guest is cutting it off. Okay, you're on now. You're on now, Lelis. All right. Go ahead. So, sorry about that. Um, so, uh, I was saying that, uh, yeah, back in year 2006, Miles McMullen, who is the mastermind of this book, and not only this, but also a book in Colombia, started thinking on, on uh, better ways of producing a book. And uh, so he started a, a, a project already on a small uh, a booklet of, on uh, the birds of one of the lodges he was working with. That was the, the initial idea or, or the catalyzer of, uh, the pro of the first project that took along and turned it to be the book. So um, the, the, the first goals on the book that uh, he was envisioning was uh, uh, something that, that should be small and light, you know, easy to use, portable, and mm, most of all, friendly to the user. So something that could be as simple as possible and in a sense, trying to become a pocketbook, right? So, but how, 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 you, make, how you make a book with 1,700 illustrations plus, 
and uh, you add all the information that is required for someone to identify their species on the field. So Miles was already working with other three friends, or better to say other two friends. So there were three already in the project when uh, eventually, you know, they realized, well, we need some, someone with experience on the field with the, with the birds that has been working in the, in the country and knows most of the birds. So that's when I got, I got invited by Miles to uh, cooperate on, on, on the project. Eventually, at the end, uh, before the publishing of our first edition, it was only Miles and I working because the other two guys, uh, for various reasons, they drop off from the project. It was taking long and, you know, it's long hours working without being paid. But yeah, I was, I already had been birding in Ecuador for, uh, since 1986. That's, uh, you know, by the time we published the book, I had been birding in Ecuador for almost three years already. So I, I, I had developed some experience with the, birds in Ecuador, and that's why I got invited to, to the project. So uh, our first edition, it came out in 2013. Um, it's, as, uh, it's only two ounces. Uh, it's got two, 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 206 pages, and is eight uh, by five inches, basically. So it's a book that you can uh, put in, the, in, the, in your back pocket on, on a blue jean, or in any of these um, birding vests or, or those vests that people use in the field, you can put it in, in your front pocket. It's very easy to carry and uh, very light. You know, it's, and it's also very friendly. Uh, then uh, we were actually successful with that small book. Uh, we ran out of, we sold all the, I think we came up with like 5,000 5, copies. They all were sold out by the end of the year 2016. So in 2017, we came up with a newer edition, uh, a bit bigger uh, and heavier, but not you know, still in the same, same sort of setup. And um, um, we improved it a little bit. So the, the, the way how we were able to do this is that we, compact, we, we, we got all the information and we coded it. So when you open the book, it's all coded in the way that you'll have the illustration of the bird by, with a map and a legenda that tells you the name and also um, important information about habitat, behavior, uh, the, the plumage on the, on, the, uh, on the bird, if it is dimorphic or not. If it is a resident or a, is a migrating species from from uh, North America and from South uh, from uh, the Oxford regions of South America, so and there's also uh, information on the status of the birds in terms of uh, if they're facing any risk of conservation. So one of the, if you open any of the pages, for instance, you have in here in this case hummingbirds. Uh, so it's not only the illustration, but then you can have a map telling you what part of the country. And of course, it requires to know a little bit of the, the biogeography of the country to pinpoint the exact habitat, but it's also described in most of the cases also described in, in the text. So um, by being able to do realistic illustrations, even though they are small, they're quite accurate, uh, the same for the maps. And it tr you try to put as precise information as possible, which that's what makes the people who like opening the book and use it. So you don't have to read a whole bunch of the stuff to decide what is a species. You can look at the map, what you look at and the field marks, and then tell, well, you know, it is in range or not. And also tells you, uh, if the elevation is right or not, or the time of the year. So, I don't know. I don't know if you. Hey, if, I'm 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 going to go ahead and stop for questions if that's okay, yeah. Lelis. Sure. So, um, let's just kind of work it backwards. Go back to the the secondary goals section. Um, 
and um, I, I truly remember, like, like, I'll just start with a question that I have because I've been your friend, and you know, throughout a lot of this period, um, like the typical illustration. How much time do you spend reviewing it to make sure it's accurate? Quite a bit. Well, uh, that tough question because that depends on how good the illustration is to start with. I mean, if, when you have a really good illustration, if the illustration is right on the spot, there's nothing to be said about it. Yeah. But you know, we all, we all are born with certain set of uh, skills that need to be improved. And that was the case with Miles. The first illustrations that Miles came up with are not as good as this one. So, you know, it, it, this, is a pro, it, this was a process in which Miles has been improving throughout the years. And he's still improving. You know, he's a wonderful illustrator, but, but you know, he, his art is, is still in, in, in always room for improvement in everything. So, so that's the case for his art. Yeah, in, but in some cases, you know, he'll, he, he'll produce an illustration and I'll have to sit there and write and write about the shape of the bill, uh, uh, the, the shape of the head, the length of the tail or the length of the bill. So all of these things I had to sit and write about because this, this is not something that we can talk, we can talk about how, we're doing, how we are doing right now. But so, so I have to write down uh, comments on all the different species regarding to all the different aspects of what we were producing. So he, he will go back redo it from scratch or use uh, uh, programs in computers to you know, change the, the shades of the color or enlarge the bill. Uh, when the, the changes were minor, he was able just to, to do it um, uh, on, in the computer. In other case, you have to start from the scratch. But uh, you know, it could, what could be uh, writing about comments about a book, uh, uh, one single species that need to be improved, it could be an hour or you know, or more. It all depends on, on how much Im improvement uh, the illustration needs. So it, it's quite variable. Gotcha. Gotcha. And um, does, does Miles us usually start with a pho photograph or, or how does he start? Because I mean, something like a hummingbird is a very difficult species to get a good pho photograph of that captures the field marks, right? Yeah, well, Miles, as I said before, Miles is a naturalist. He's also a bird watcher. So he's, he's watched and, and uh, birds for a long time and also studied them in Ecuador. So he does know what a whole bunch of the species uh, and others that he doesn't know. Yes, we have to refer to other illustrations, um, photos, videos, uh, so in my comments, I always use, you know, many other books uh, from my personal library and I'll take pictures of them and saying, you know, this guy is doing this because this is the feature of the species, the color on the back is egg even so. And um, so this is what we need to, to make it look like in those cases. Yeah, for, for in, the, in, the, in the cases where Miles already knew the species much easier, but, you know, uh, yes, we are using photos, videos, uh, other books, um, and illustrations from from previous artists uh, and from other artists in previous uh, books that have been published, not only for Ecuador but uh, you know throughout South America. Sure. Um, any other questions out there? I've got a couple from Nina. Um, I won't use your last name. Um, sort of talking about the front cut of her. Um, and for me, it's kind of a funny question, but I'll I'll ask it because I'm a straightforward kind of guy. Yeah. So um, she she said the front cover of the first edition, which she has, has yeah. the Hokotoko uh, Foundation logo on the front. The second edition has the Partnership for International Birding logo on the front, and that was simply a commercial thing, right? Yeah. This this is the first edition. And I think we have, I don't remember in the cover, but maybe so. Maybe it's, this, this is a, 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 a picture that I, I just got from one of my, my uh, folders. But 
maybe less, it's not the, the one we publish. So that's the first one and that's the second one. Yeah, the first one, um, in a sense, Hoka Toka Foundation did help us with some small amount of funds for, for uh, the publication of the book. If I had a long time ago, I don't remember all the details. Yeah, but the, the worst, they, they, did some, they did help with some, some uh, um, funds for, uh, the, you know, to pay for part of, of the work. And um, later on in the second foundation, in the second edition, it was PIB, Charles was generous enough to also help us with some of the funds to uh, 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 work in the book. And in return, we, in both cases, we gave them uh, back some of the, some not a given number of, of um, books back for uh, in retribution of, of all the money that was pitched in for, for the um, work required for the books. Yeah, that, that's the reason why they were there. And the uh, first time Hokotoko, you know, I was, uh, I, I was still in Hokotoko Foundation um, working closely with them, part of it, I was part of them, uh, of the board of directors of the Hokotoko Foundation. So it was easier for me back those days. Then I, I dropped the foundation. Uh, so I was already working with Charles and as I say again, he was kind enough to support us uh, with, with the working of the book as well. That's the reason why uh, two different institutions uh, in, in a, you know, related or affiliated with the, with the working of the book. Yeah, so I mean, I think it was both a commercial and a, and a, and a friendship thing and a natural business relationship thing. And, and, I, and I do happen to have a copy of the first edition here and it does indeed have the Hoko Toko Foundation logo yeah. on the front. And again, the site Akinish is that. Um, uh, any, any other good questions out there, they're all welcome. And you can either text them or just unmute and put them in there. Hearing none, I think we'll learn a little bit more. Well, let's let's go back to the coding slide because I actually have some questions about that. Um, so coding is just about um, letting people know how to access information throughout the book. Is that the deal? Yeah, yeah. So we came up with a, a, a it's basically a system, a simple system that tries to, in order for you to tell, you know, the species lives in a given elevation every time uh, that, that, that you describe the species, just by referring to the code, you know what the signs are in terms of elevation. So you don't have to say that. Uh, when you're talking about um, the conservation status of the species, you don't have to say every time it's, uh, uh, let's say, critically endangered. Just have the, the CR code with a, with a red in it. And, and that tells you what it is. So the maps, for instance, if it is uh, green, it means it's a species resident in Ecuador that breeds in the country. Uh, different shades of green imply different subspecies that are noted there too. Um, uh, when it's uh, light blue, in that case, that's a migrant species. And you know, it's it's a it's a system like that that allows you to, in one single page, have lots of information that are not repeated over. And you don't you don't have to write over again in in each page. That that you know that allows you to use. Uh, this use in a better way the the small amount of the space you have in each page. That's why you use the coding. And then what makes the book so friendly is that all the information is with the species. In most of these big field guides or you know, field books that people publish, you have the the, the plates separated from the text. And then when you are studying a species, you look at the plates, then you have to refer to the text. And uh, you, gotta, you gotta go forth and back all the time. In this case, you have all the information in, this, in one single page. 
and you know uh, similar speeds are very close to each other so you don't have to really uh, spend lots of time uh, uh, trying to find what you you were looking for that's that's what that's, that's the idea uh, behind the coding you know, what the system that we uh, that miles as it was actually miles that who who came up with the first ideas of it and then of course later on discussing we're publishing what we want to do or not gotcha hey um uh any other questions out there and then i have one more question and then we'll go on to publishing the book um anything else folks again text or unmute and pop in a question um you know this this may be a dumb question which is my way to invite others to ask questions as well but well ellis will be respectful i'm sure <laughs> but um you know one thing that i the first time that I went to Ecuador that I thought was really interesting, and it took me, I don't know, a few years to really kind of wrap my head around it, is how much species variation there is by altitudinal range. Um, and of course, every species seems to work a little bit differently. But I mean, because Ecuador in a way is a country of, you know, sort of defined by, by the Andes running up the bit, it all, um, there's a lot of species that 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 ex exist on both sides, but the altitudinal range does create a lot of variation, even compared to other parts of South America. I mean, that same pattern exists in other parts of South America, but um, you know, that's just something that really defines Ecuador bird watching. Am I crazy about that, or is that about right? Well. <sighs> What varies with the elevation is the set of a species. So, if, you know, for, when you have the lowlands in the in the Amazon, the 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 set of a species that live there are very different to the ones that live in the top of the mountains. So, and you have a a a, a, a clay, you have a, a range of a species that is changing. You know, it goes from high density. Uh, oh, sorry, low density, high diversification, high diversity in the lowlands. And as you go higher, the density starts dropping off, the species are being replaced. And then uh, you get to the top of the mountains and there's very sparse density and very sparse uh, that biodiversity in terms of the species, but they are completely different. None of the species that you find on top of the mountain in the Andes are the same ones you find in the Amazon. So that's what uh, makes a, a quite appealing to travel in a, in a small country like Ecuador, because you know you can be in the same day. I mean, if, if you're just having a simple trip, not burning, or just uh, sightseeing, you can go in the very same day, be, be in the Amazon basin, in one of the tributaries of the Amazon, Re mighty Amazon river, travel by land, go to the snow-capped mountain in the Andes, and before it, the sun and watch the sunset you know, be in the snow on the top of the mountain and then watch the sunset on the sunset on the coast of ecuador in any of the beaches so uh, it's very everything is so close and there's a lot of variation yeah it was just by by driving a very simple one hour or 45 minutes you can completely change the the, the, the set of species you're looking at especially in the andes and that's what you know. That's what basically makes the country, and it's a tiny country, having over seventeen hundred of species. Great, thank you very much. Um, if there's no other questions, I think we'll just move on to the the book industry section of the discussion. Yeah. I'm so gonna, one one of one of the reasons why I think we were successful, it's because we had the willing to write the the. the the field, the field book or the book, because uh, uh, many of many of um, many of the 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 books that are published now uh, are published through a big uh, editorial company, you know? and uh, in most of the most of the others sign a contract with a given editorial company, and uh, so they will pay for your time to be writing a project 
that you agree with it, uh, agree with them in terms of you know how this is gonna look like, how many pages roughly is gonna have, how many illustrations the book is gonna have. Um, and, and again, this company, once you start, you start uh, producing stuff, you gotta be delivering according with the timetable that you have with them. So you can get paid, paid on your work and, and the time. So then they started, you know, also ha having people in the editorial company reading what you're producing and also uh, correcting or improving whatever is needed. And at the same time, the, the, the editorial company is the one that eventually prints the books and finally uh, uh, enters into the uh, selling, you know, in the business, the commercialization of the book. Uh, in this case, uh, this, this uh, small, this several, we actually have this, uh, the, the Galapagos um, field guide. Uh, it was also published basically by Miles and I. So that's why we, we uh, Miles calls his, his, his editorial the Ruddy Editions, because it, it's only basically a tackling job. It's just two guys working together and spending thousands of hours uh, in doing all of what uh, an editorial company does. You know, nobody paid, paid us for, to do this work, but uh, eventually uh, by, at the end, selling of the book is what we we were compensated with all the all the effort and time we put it in there. So it's basically uh, this is a job that was uh, done out of willing, willing the two guys that were decided, you know, came up with the idea, the plan, and kept on going until the end. Because many of these projects are also drop off, you know, because of short of time, short of money. So it's basically just just willing, willing to do it, and um, so this is this is an aquarella that uh, a self portrait that uh, Miles did recently on himself. Um, Miles can illustrate one of these birds, you know, any of these the hummingbird requires a bit more detail. He can do it in thirty minutes or a bit longer, but some of the more simple species he can illustrate one in fifteen. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and it's, it, 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 it's over. So he's a really fast worker. And um, you know, once you've uh, polished and, and perfect your, your technique, yeah, the, the, the process of illustrating something, it's simpler. But I mean, you gotta have the skill. And without the art, there's no way you can come up with a, with a, with a book like the one we polish. So. That's, uh, that's why I say, you know, he's the mastermind and his art is, is what uh, drove uh, the, the, the creation of the, of the book, the, the making of the book, better to say. Um, so, yeah, you know, as I was just uh, thinking on, on, on the question that Charles made about, you know, what is required in order to to uh, produce the book, uh, so when when he comes with an illustration, I gotta sit there and see if the colors are correct, if the shape, the posture for the bird is correct. Then I had to study the ta taxonomy, decide the the you know follow the new taxonomy so we can update it to the current name and you know, what, the, what the name of the family is, what the genus is, uh, uh, correct the spelling mistakes on, 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 on the scientific name. Um, also talk about what, were, what will be the best way of describing in a short phrase uh, on the with a text that tells, that will tell something important for the bird species identification, and also working in the maps, you know, like a given species, this is the range, or this is a, these are the sites where the bird is being recorded. So it, it's, it's a lot of work. It's a, it's a I'll say it's a, a lot. It's a lot. Uh, working in a book, it just requires patience and a lot of a lot of work, a lot of time. That's what. Uh, uh, it's needed to beyond beyond the knowledge, but it is 
countless hours of working in many of and most of these uh, details. Um, so once once we already have the product in a, a particular file, then we gotta go um, with the press there, or in this case an editorial uh, to their press and uh, run some testing on printing because uh, a field guide, you know, you. You, you, can, you can ruin a field guide by the setting of the colors. If you set the colors to, to red, to brown, to green, to yellow, then, then it affects all the illustrations. You know, and you, know, you have uh, 210, 210 plates with each plate having an average of eight illustrations and all of them have different colors. So when you change one shade, Let's say you want to make sure that a given brown is the right brown, or the or the or the shade of red on that brown is the right color. You are altering all the different all, all the two hundred six plates. Now, you can uh, this this big uh, play, uh, this big sheet you are seeing there is got two four it's eight plates no sorry sixteen plates. You can alter the color. On, on that big sheet and you can change the shades and, 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 and um, yeah, the shade who on, on the plate, but it will affect the color on that particular plate or that sheet, those 16 plates. And then you can do the same for the, the remaining. So, and once, once you've kind of decided what the, the those are the right colors. You you run some some printings, and then you compare with the with with the illustrations and or, or what you are expecting the colors to be. Uh, this is this is critical. I remember someone in the states published a book. A famous author in the states published a book, and the, the colors were off. And eventually they throw they throw away uh, almost all the books because of that. They they, they went. And, and we did it again because of, of failures on, on the color. So this is actually a key, a key factor in the process of, of uh, producing a book. So I spent uh, two days uh, in order to make the colors right for, you know, before you, you, you print thousands of books. Because if you print, uh, if you have one mistake in one page, you are, you are reproducing that mistake as many books as you publish. So, you want to try to to have as little mistakes uh, as possible when you eventually go into press. And um, and this is I was ex this is the new book, the the one that a friend of mine published in the um, a year after we, we came up with our second edition. And so that's the difference in size. And uh, and again, you know, the, the style is a wonderful book. It's got a lot of information. Um, but you gotta go forward and back, and it's heavy, and and eventually, you know, toward to, towards the end of the day, if you are carrying it around your backpack, you you you'll notice the other, the other one, the small book, you just can put it in your pocket or you know, or in your, or in the backpack, but it will you know it's it's very light. So many of the people actually do prefer our book because it's very funny, it's easy to carry, and you know we're very proud about it for it, you know, I, writing a book is like, it's like uh, having a, uh, it's part of the family. It's, it's a daughter, a son compared to that, uh, very cherries, yeah. So, uh, hey, here, we, here we have just, um, what we got, we got, we got about 20 minutes left. I think we'll probably yeah, take sure. 10 or 15 Questions. minutes more. Mm -hmm. I just want to open it up for questions and I want to answer a few questions we've been sent in. Um, and some of these I know the answer to. One is like, um, well, the first one I'll let you answer. Um, is the book available in Spain, in Spain and at all? I think maybe the first edition was? No, we never, we never published in, in, in Spanish. And this is some, this is a project that uh, Miles and I have been talking about. And I think that, uh, I will. I will. I personally would like to do it, and and 
I have to convince Miles about it. But yeah, no, we never publish any of our books in, in Spanish, nor the first edition, neither the second one or the, the Galapagos book. I think this, this will be the first one we will try to do in Spanish, but I gotta uh, uh, convince Miles in, 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 in going that yeah, way. Yeah, and, and truly Arturo Corcant Anal, who wrote the, uh, I'll call it the Field Book to the Birds of Cuba. I don't really know the exact, oh, it's right, it's right here. The Field Guide to the Birds of Cuba. Um, we have another sort of uh, relationship there where we're supporting some, you know, some of the illustrations. And uh, uh, it's just important there that we try to get a Spanish edition to sort of educate people with their natural resources. And um, he would very really need to learn the names in English so they can guide um, English speaking uh, cl cl clients. And I even wondered something that, simple like uh like an index in spain anish that then crosses over to the english thing but that was just i mean he didn't really latch on that idea either but that's just a thought that i had um the other question that we've had is um sort of the distribution of the book so uh the the, the field book to the birds of ecuador is available on ebay um, and you can just put the name in there and I will send a link out to, uh, to, uh, anybody on the call and who, anybody who registered on the call. Um, and, and truly for all the effort it takes to distribute books, I mean, I think I'm making about $6 an hour, but I'm happy to do, do it as a, <laughs> as a, as a thanks for all the things that Let Ellis has done for the Partnership for International, uh, birding, um, which is a pretty um, immense relationship over time. Um, and I'm not whining about my six bucks an hour, pal. It's just, that's just sort of the reality. <laughs> but I'm fine with it. Um, and, um, but yeah, so eBay is the easiest way to get it. In. I'm going to text to the group the, the name of the the name of the book it's uh let me see if i get it right here i always mess it up um field book of the birds of ecuador yeah so if you put that in in there it ought to pop up you may have to put in mcmullen and navarette as well i have to always get navarette spelled correctly and look at that i did it um so um, so that's the easiest way to get it in the United States. Um, and then um, uh, somebody asked, is it distributed in Ecuador? It's available widely in Ecuador, right? Yeah, in Ecuador, in, by, by the way, this, this video, it's uh, Miles working on a yellow crown tyrannolite, one of the illustrations for, for books. So yeah, in Ecuador, it's available widely. Um, most of the, the better places to buy them in Ecuador are the, the, the some nature reserves um, and birding sites and, and, and uh, birding lodges. Almost all the, the very well-known birding, birding lodges in Ecuador have, uh, have the book available, yeah. Right. So it's it, 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 it very difficult to travel in Ecuador without finding, without finding our book. Right. And I have about 800 copies in my basement. So happy for you to order them on, e on eBay. And there you go. Um, uh, any other questions, folks? And I think we've got about another five or 10 more minutes of Let Ellis content. Though I love this uh, video of Miles illustrating a bird. That's amazing. Uh, but you go, my friend. I'll, I'll mute again. Well, I. I... Don't have much else to say. Um, it's only that uh, the, the only it's just to finish. I would like to say that um, writing a book or working in a book, it's is a very fulfilling. It's very fulfilling. You know, it 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 gives you a different perspective of what 
writing of, of a book is because you know when when you haven't done it you, you get a book in your hand and you have no idea all all different aspects of what coming up with a book means especially all the time and effort and on a field guide, the knowledge that is needed for, for doing it. So, but it, you know, it makes you understand and appreciate all the, the, the work that people before you have put it there. Like, you know, the, the, the wonderful work that uh, Robert Richley and, and, and Guy Tudor with his illustrations did for South America. And simply every, any, any single book that, uh, got in your hand, then, then you really appreciate uh, what, what all the implications that are involved in, in, uh, with the final product you have in your hand. So uh, it's enlightening, it's, 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 it's a wonderful experience. Not, not everybody has a chance of doing it, but it's a wonderful experience. That's the only thing I have to say. And uh, thank you, thank you for your time. Uh, I know this is a very boring topic to talk about, I really appreciate. I just want to say thank, thank you. I learned quite a bit for, you know, a project that I mostly put investment money in, but not sweat like you and Miles, Miles did. And it's just sort of impressive to see. And I truly, I'm fascinated with the video of uh, Miles illustrating this uh, what, yellow crown tyrannula. Did I get yellow that right? Yellow crown yes. Hey, not bad for an old deaf guy. But um, he just wanted administrative thing. If for some reason we've um, mentioned your name in full and you want to get your name erased from the video conference recording, we're happy to do that. It's just a privacy thing we need to offer under Zoom rules. Um, and I think it's a nice thing to appreciate people's privacy. So if we've used your full name um, and you want us to erase it from the video, just email service at pibird.com and just look for additional information about uh, birding opportunities with Let Ellis Navarrete. We do run about, oh, four to eight different Ecuador trips a year together and another 10 different trips throughout South America together, being Peru, Colombia, um, Brazil, et cetera. And um, when I mean together, I mean with the Partnership for International uh, birding. Um, I personally do not go on all of the tours. I wish I could. Um, but this is with Let Ellis as the as the field guide and tour lead tour leader. Um, and usually six to eight participants. More on our website at www.pibird.com. And um, just thank you all for being on the call today. Let me see if there's any other questions here. There's a couple of thank yous. Um, Charles. Yeah, shoot. Uh, is the 2017 the last version, the, the newest? Uh, yes, it is. That is correct. Yeah, that's okay. it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And it's the one with the, uh, oh, can't believe I don't have a copy in front of me. Um, remind me about the bird illustration on the second edition. Okay, send me a link, Charles. Oh, I sure will. Thanks. I sure will. Um, let's see what else we have here. It's going to approach the language of the country first. Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, here's a, co a, a question from one of the clients that ask, how come the books are not, the, the field guides are not typically published in the, in the language of the country first? And I think I have the answer for that, but I'll see what you say, my friend. That's a yeah. good one. Yeah, it's a, it's a very good question. The issue is that birding, the birding industry, or, or birding as a hobby, is just developing in South America. Uh, this is this is uh, something quite new for for us in terms uh, of a society. Um, you also gotta remember that um, birding is a hobby. So, in order to have a hobby, you gotta have an, an economy that allows you to to turn some of your time in the hobby. When you have a society which is fighting and struggling to raise money, uh, raise money for, for living, it's just to eat and, and to survive, then you don't have time for, 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 uh, 
for hobbies. So once the economies in Latin America have improved a little bit, then people start looking in, in things to do for pleasure and birding is one of them. So initially when I started guiding in Ecuador, uh, my first guiding gig was in 1991, I remember. And we were only five guides in Ecuador. And, uh, and there were two Ecuadorians, three foreigners that were uh, the, ones, the, the ones we were resident in, in, in the country. There were lots of others who were coming from outside. So Ecuadorians or Latin Americans you just saw birding as a crazy thing. It's like, you do what? You go out in there and look for birds and you get paid for, for going with them to show them the birds. It, it was like an idea from the moon, you know, from a, from a different world. So that was why most of those books never were published, were never published in the, in the, in the, language, in the original language. But this is changing. I mean, once, once, as I said before, the economies of the countries are improving. Societies have um, more money and time uh, to be set aside for hobbies, building what, being one of them. Then there is a market for for the the birch, the the version in the language of the country. In our case, in Spanish, Brazil Brazil is published some of these books in Portuguese, and that's why I said you know I think I'm gonna uh, try to convince Miles to start producing some of our books in in, in Spanish or translating them because they already they already published. It's, we need the translation of the wording for for them. But yeah, that, that was the reason because back in those days nobody care much about birding. I mean, local people didn't care much about birding. This is something improving. I remember there's a, um, a census that was uh, taken, uh, performed re uh, originally in Ecuador. And it was like, birder, Ecuadorian birds were like around a thousand people only, something like that. But, you know, maybe, they, maybe there's more, maybe double that 2000 people birding in Ecuador. But, I, and then you also have the biologists, uh, people that work in tourism, I would also like to have the, the book published in, in our language as well. Uh, certainly the, the number of, of uh, uh, books that we publish will be way less than the one we publish in, in, in English because of that. Yeah, and um, um, golly geez, I'll, I'll kind of ask you this question in part. Um, somebody asked, um, do, do you lead trips in Northwest Ecuador? And I'll let you just sort of answer that with the, what, three or four different areas of Ecuador we, we do birding trips in. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, no, guide, guide, uh, we have several tours in Ecuador and on the Northwest, yeah, we have one that uh, visits um, um, close to Quito, uh, due west towards the Pacific Ocean. We go, Haslo has three, uh, 400 meters elevation. That's 1200 feet of elevation in some uh, uh, lowland rainforest, Silanche, uh, and all the, all the different habitats be in between that and Quito, which is over the Andes in the central valleys. So yeah, we, we do, we do uh, have a, several tours uh, a year that go on the west side. In fact, the most popular tour is the the northwest, northwest and, eastern. and eastern, yeah, north, northwest Ecuador and 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 eastern and eastern Andes, ten days, nine nights. That goes from the west west Ecuador, started with Mindo several days, coming towards Mindo, the central valley, going to the east, uh, to some cloud forests and back to Quito. And we also have the the southern tours in in. The southern part of Ecuador, in, uh, towards the, the coastal southern area, it's much drier, different habitat. The uh, the deciduous and semi deciduous forest, um, and also with the influence of the Andes and close to the ocean for shorebirds and seabirds and all that. Yeah. Yeah, and the, and then we also have an east slope tour, which we schedule maybe once a year that goes from Quito down into Caoca and down into the Amazon Basin. And hits us some wonderful lodges and reserves in Guango, San Isidro, Wild Sumaco, and then there's a bunch of lodges in the Amazon base, and we have our favorites for that sort of a tour. Um, 
Uh, and then Ellis also guides in Colombia, Peru, Bolivia, Brazil, Peru. God, am I missing anything? I don't think so. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we're gonna wrap you guys. Thank you for your time. Uh, participants, let Ellis thank you once again. Um, and uh, I'm sure we'll do something on, I, I hope to con, I hope to talk you into doing something on birding in Brazil, um, maybe in two or three months, but we'll catch up on that soon. Okay, we'll see. Thank you guys. Thanks for your time. Uh, fair enough to answer. Thank, I didn't mean to put, put you on the spot. Hey, thank you very much. Yep. Thanks to bye all bye of you. Bye-bye.